On today's episode, only three technologies matter now. Here's why. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. We're a quarter of the way through the 21st century now, and like the last century, engineering is defining essentially everything. Now, there are lots of arguments about what defined the 20th century, and I believe that there were three critical factors. The development of mass production and the mass consumption society that followed it, typified by the spread of automobiles from a luxury good to a necessity. And the second was the development of the atomic bomb, which changed politics and warfare forever. But in my opinion, the third was the development of data processing by way of electronic computers, the effects of which are being felt today on steroids. So far in this century, it seems to me that there are three important technologies again. The first is alternate energy, meaning energy sources not derived from fossil fuels. The most important of these will be nuclear fusion, because when that problem is finally cracked, the results will go far beyond zero carbon electricity. Fusion promises water where there is drought, warmth where there is cold, crops where nothing will grow, and ultimately a final solution to the solid waste problem, not to mention spacecraft propulsion that could actually make humans interplanetary. Now, the second technology, I believe, is, of course, artificial intelligence. This is just an extension of the advances in computers we saw in the last century, except that now we will, I predict, see machines take over actual decision-making in a way never imagined in human history. I believe I'm going to live long enough to see a world in which important political decisions are made by machines, and humans will follow those decisions with 100% faith that they represent the best way forward. It's going to be something that's either wonderful or a dystopian horror worse than anything Hollywood could imagine. In three years, Cyberden will become the largest supplier of military computer systems. All stealth bombers are upgraded with Cyberden computers becoming fully unmanned. Afterwards, they fly with a perfect operational record. The Skynet funding bill is passed. The system goes online on August 4th, 1997. Human decisions are removed from strategic defense. Skynet begins to learn at a geometric rate. It becomes self-aware at 2.14 a.m. Eastern Time, August 29th. Now, the third technology, the one which is just beginning to see the light of day, is general-purpose humanoid robotics. Now, robots have been around industrially since GM installed the first Unimate in a New Jersey die-casting plant in 1961, but the major changes are going to happen when robots exist in a form factor that functions inside a world designed for human bodies and functions in the manner of human workers, responding to voice commands and doing the things that people need in the household, not just on the assembly line. When these things will clean your house, mow the lawn, and walk your kids to school, a lot of things will change. And it's not just household applications. How do we know that a backhoe is the most efficient way to dig a large hole? The future of civil engineering may be armies of thousands of small robots working with pick and shovel. Are we certain that tractors and combines are the best solution for commercial scale agriculture? The future may again be armies of robots planting, tending, and harvesting individual plants. The applications are too numerous to mention, but the great unknown is, what happens when AI merges with these humanoid robots? Will they be imbued with a pseudo-personality that will cause humans to develop emotional attachments to them? You see this with family pets all the time, so it's reasonable to assume that the same affection we have for a dog or a cat could easily be transferred to a loyal personal robot that looks like a seven-year-old. Now, companies like Boston Robotics and Tesla are working on this now, and the critical breakthroughs are coming, not just in code and processor speed, but in electric actuators that are replacing hydraulics with systems that are significantly cheaper and require less maintenance. It's going to be a very interesting future. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.